There are many releases for the month of March when it comes to manga, but I am here to show you 20 of the most anticipated releases that I think are worth checking out. Let's do it. We have another chaotic month of new manga releases. I try and limit myself to just the volume once, like I always say. It's kind of easier to recommend new series instead of telling you to buy a volume 40 or 20 of a pre-existing one. So with all that said, let's get started. We begin with a trio of Kodansha releases. The first book that we're going to talk about is A Do or A Do, Volume 1. This is a seinen manga written and drawn by Amano Jaku. This is a sci fi futuristic story, but it also deals with very humanistic themes. We follow a wave of immigration. Japan has become a volatile mix of people and cultures rocked by the protest of xenophobic extremists unhappy with the new status quo. A brash, job-hopping young woman named Rico is driving her scooter through one such protest when she sees a boy about to get run over by a truck. Rico just manages to shove him out of the way, and in the hours that follow, she finds herself looking after the boy named Eito. Rico takes Eito out for a bowl of ramen, but just as they're about to dig in, Eito is fired upon by a distant army sniper. As the bullet pierces the restaurant window and comes whizzing towards Eito, plant-like tendrils snake out from his arm and stop it mid-flight. Who in the world is this boy and why is the army after him? So obviously this has very Akira vibes running throughout and of course cyberpunk themes and dystopian futures and stuff like that. So I'm very interested in reading this. It is currently ongoing, so I cannot tell you how many volumes it's going to be, but it looks pretty cool and I do want to check it out. I love the mixture here of social commentary, a little bit of politics, a little bit of futuristic sci-fi stuff with what I assume are supernatural abilities. Next up, we got a shoujo manga. This is Anyway, I'm Falling in Love with You, Volume 1, also being released by Kodansha, like I mentioned. This is written and drawn by Haruka Mitsui. This one tells the story of Misuha in her 17th birthday. Her parents totally forgot about it, and the senpai she likes isn't interested in her. But when her longtime childhood friend asks her out, Misuha has to sort out what this change could mean, and her feelings may not be the only ones changing. Adding to to the challenge is a global pandemic appending the hopes and joys of high school life. But romance is resilient and crushes and confessions flourish among Mizuha's friends. A brand new love story from the author of I Fell in Love After School. It's interesting to see the theme of a global pandemic. I'm not sure how that will function within the story, but it is nonetheless interesting and I'm willing to check this out. I do like the art being displayed here. Next up from Kodansha is one of their most anticipated releases, Medalist Volume 1. This is written and drawn by Surumaikara. This is another seinen ongoing series, and this one has a prestigious honor to it. This won the 60th Shogakukan Manga Award in the general category back in 2023, so you know it's pretty popular. This one is about figure skating. Inori is a little girl who dreams of becoming a figure skater, yet the obstacles to the this dream feel insurmountable. Inori's already too old. She's 11. She's always had trouble at school, and worst of all, her older sister's skating dreams ended in failure. So her mother is dead set against putting her other daughter through a similar experience. Still, the rink is the only place Inori can be herself, and she's out on the ice when a fateful meeting takes place. Tsukasa, a frustrated coach on the edge of giving up competitive skating himself, will join Inori to form an unstoppable duo powered by hard work, transcendent joy, and an unshakable belief that they can prove everyone wrong. Just by me reading that description, I can already tell you why this thing won an award. It sounds great. I love the inspirational story here with these characters fighting against all odds to prove to themselves and to others that they still got it, that they still want to venture forth and make their dreams a reality of being in this competitive sport. I'm not big on figuring you're skating, but sports stories have always been really good. You have the highs and lows, you have the drama and the whole competitive nature that make for some compelling storytelling. So definitely be on the lookout for Medalist Volume 1. 
from Love Love, the imprint of Tokyo Pop, we have Cover My Scars With Your Kiss, Volume 1, written and drawn by Io Amaki. This is a BL series that ran from July of 2019 to 2020. Seiichi Kurusu is the handsomest eldest son to inherit a large company. After running into insecure dentist Nao Seto, not once but twice coincidentally, Seiichi wonders if fate is at play. When Nao reveals that Seiichi actually reminds him of the man he's been in love with, Seiichi proposes a deal with him. From the length of time he receives his dental treatment from Nao, the two of them will date. Now's tragic love story combined with Seiichi's status as family heir and the impending countdown, can something good come from such a relationship? I'm not gonna lie, this sounds really interesting. It's a nice juicy drama story. So yeah, if you are into BL stories, definitely be on the lookout for Cover My Scars With Your Kiss. From Square Enix, we got The Villainess's Guide to Not Falling in Love, Volume 1. This is written by Toya with art by Ren Sakuma. This is an ongoing shoujo. From a mundane existence to an extraordinary adventure, Luciana, once an ordinary woman, now finds herself reincarnated as the stunning villainess of an otome game. Well aware of impending plot twist, she's ready to rewrite her destiny and avoid catastrophe. She hatches a brilliant plan to live a peaceful life and avoid troublesome suitors. What could possibly go wrong? Surprise! These persistent men refuse to take a hint. And if that weren't enough, she also possesses incredible, unparalleled magical abilities. What about this world has made her so special? From Titan Manga, we got Tengen Hero Wars Volume 1. This is written by Yasu Hiromoto with art by Kubaru Sakanoichi. This is a seinen historical isekai military series that is still ongoing. After receiving a mysterious invitation to come play in heaven, Oda Nobunaga and his sister are transported to a mysterious new world where the mightiest warriors from history will meet to do battle. Here, the pair will meet legendary figures such as Napoleon Bonaparte, Julius Caesar, Zuge Liang, probably butchered that, sorry, and plenty of others to see who will be crowned the greatest of all time. Obviously, this is very reminiscent of Record of Ragnarok, only the stakes aren't as high. The rest of humanity is not at risk, except the main protagonist here on this book of Tengen Hero Wars. So we'll see what happens. From the previews, it looks really interesting and violent, bloody goodness. I couldn't share some of the panels that I saw because they were brutal, and I don't think the YouTube algorithm would appreciate that. <laughs> From Viz Media, we got a double dose of One Piece. We're getting One Piece Shokugeki no Sanji. This is written by Yuto Tsukuda and art by Shun Saeki. If you don't know this creative team, they are the ones responsible for Food Wars. It tells of the straw hat chef Sanji as he dishes up in his battle to win over the bellies and hearts of all he feeds, man or woman, friend or foe. This one shot spin off rolls all six original story chapters into one collection. This is a collab made in heaven. If you are a fan of both, this is right up your alley. The other One Piece spin-off that we have here is, of course, Ace's Story Volume 1. This is written by Sho Hinata and Tatsuya Hamazaki with art by Boichi. This is a spin-off of the One Piece franchise detailing Ace's story collected across six chapters or two volumes that ran from September of 2020 to December of 2021. Readers can follow the story of the man who lived like a wildfire from the moment he formed the infamous Spade Pirates, discover the daring piratical feats of Fire Fist Ace, Straw Hat Luffy's legendary older brother. So similar to the previous book, if you're a fan of One Piece and of course the character of Ace, then you are getting this book, right? Another very interesting release, and it's not for the reason you might think, this is Number Call from Kodansha. This is a one volume series, one and done volume as I like to say, six chapters that ran from 2013 to 2014. This is written by Nagisa Furuya, and it is highlighted here that they are the creator of My Summer of You series. High schooler Eito Tachibana has always hated his name, including all of the jokes and puns about the number eight that have come along with it. It's as if the number has haunted him like a ghost ever since he was a child. 
One day, he meets a classmate named Tomoya Hata, also known as Hachi, the Japanese word for eight. What begins as casual greetings and small talk in the hallway soon becomes something much deeper, and Eito realizes that it's more than just a similar nickname that draws him to Hachi. Could the number that Eito resented for so long finally bring him something he'll love, and is that someone Hachi? Now, I had another manga listed in here that I wanted to recommend because it was a Kuma release, and I had never talked about Kuma on these videos before, and I'm open to talking about everything on this channel. All manga are valid. I appreciate all genres and topics and all that fun stuff. Everybody out there has a book waiting for them, and who knows, that book might be it for some people. Unfortunately, I've been adding, as you're seeing in this video, preview images for these books. I've always wanted to do that and well, here we are. It took me a while, but I'm adding the previews. And when I looked up previews for that manga, it was just way too spicy. And, and I'm not I'm not joking. All the images I could find, I cannot show. So I, I didn't want to do that and leave that one hanging. So here we have number call instead. And it just so happens that I really enjoyed the description here. I love the wordplay and the theme surrounding the number eight. I think it's pretty clever and it sounds pretty dramatic and sweet at the same time. So heck yeah, I'm going to recommend it as well. So go check out Number Call from Kodansha. From Yen Press, we have The Tiger Won't Eat the Dragon Yet, Volume 1. This is written and drawn by Hachi Inaba. This is a seinen fantasy series that is still ongoing. In the mountains somewhere, a tiger catches its prey, a lone dragon, the kind that is hardly ever seen. Eating the dragon's meat extracts the ultimate flavor. Drinking its blood heals all one's injuries. Devouring its heart grants immortality. And yet, upon seeing the dragon, dragon's undeveloped stature, the tiger refuses to eat it. Dragon and tiger, predatory and prey, is what ties them together. Simply natural hunting instincts or something more. I'm not gonna lie, suspicious looking covering aside, I'm actually really intrigued by this. I like the idea that this story is out in the wilderness, there are no humans, you get essentially anthropomorphic animals, but they have real animal forms, and I like the whole premise of, uh, you know, uh, these characters inhabiting human traits as they start to get to know each other and break down barriers for peace and love. I say with air quotes that I'm doing right now, but you can't see them, so don't worry. I do like the art from Hachi Inaba, so I am eagerly anticipating to read this. No joke. From Seven Seas Entertainment, we have a GL ongoing. This is How Do I Turn My Best Friend Into My Girlfriend? Volume 1. This is written and drawn by Siu Yasaka. Minami and Yuzu have been besties since, well, forever. Or at least that's what Minami thought. But when some rando confesses to Yuzu, Minami realizes that her feelings might not be what you typically call friendship anymore. It doesn't take long for Minami to realize that she wants to change their relationship status. But will she able to muster the courage to confess? Or will she simply be happy being by Yuzu's side. I like the art, looks like a sweet little romance series. Interested to know if you guys are going to pick up How Do I Turn My Best Friend Into My Girlfriend? Let me know in the comment section below. Black Summoner Volume 1. This is a long-running series that started as a light novel, and if memory serves me right, it is still ongoing. So we are finally getting the physical edition of the manga being published by J Novel Club, JNC. This story is written by Dofu Mayoi, an art by Gin Amo and Kurogin. Diggs. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but I'm gonna go with it. Apologies in advance. This is an ongoing shonen series, by the way. A boy finds himself in a strange place with no memory of his past. His name is Kelvin, and he soon discovers that he's been transmigrated to another world, giving up even his memories in exchange for extremely powerful abilities. Thus, he begins his journey as the world's strongest summoner, challenging one mighty adversary after the other, gathering allies and discovering his calling as a true battle junkie. This sounds like a cool isekai series, so if you're a fan of that subgenre, I think you'll be right at home with Black Summoner. 
from Yen Press, we have a very unusual release, but I am really interested to read this story. This is Adult Picture Book New Edition, Volume 1. This is written and drawn by Kei Itoi, and it recently wrapped up. This is a seinen series. It ran for three volumes, 21 chapters, from December of 2021 to July of 2023. Erotic manga author Kudo's friend Haruki passed away, leaving behind his young daughter Kiki and a note bequeathing her to Kudo. Strange as the situation is, Kudo commits to making a real family for the girl. So when he meets a woman who reminds him of his late friend, he fires off a marriage proposal on the spot. By blood, friendship, love, or circumstance, family is family. I'm interested in finding out if Kiki will discover her late father's work and what is going to be her thoughts on the subject. I can't be the only one that thought of that, right? Or maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just the weird one out there. Regardless, we can find out now thanks to Yen Press releasing this volume in the month of March. Another release from Kodansha is I Can't Say No to the Lonely Girl, Volume 1. This is Story and Art by Kajikaze. This is a GL series that ran for six volumes, 34 chapters, back in October 2019 all the way to October of 2022. Quintessential good girl Sakurai finds herself trapped in the middle of a bribery scheme. Her teacher offers to write a recommendation letter in exchange for luring a truant student into attendance. Sakurai pins down the reclusive transfer student named Honda, but there are strings attached. Honda demands that Sakurai grant one wish every day. The first wish is a kiss, and Sakurai finds herself feeling very eager to please. From Viz Media, we have Magilumiere Lumiere Magical Girls Inc. Volume 1. This is written by Seka Iwata and art by Yu Aoki. This is a currently ongoing shonen series, but if you're not sure about it, I got some alternatives for you because I think this series is about to blow up in popularity. There's never a dull day at the office when you're a magical girl. Are you looking for something new, something challenging, something very highly paid? Exterminating monsters is an exciting, fast-paced field that will get you out from behind a desk and into the action. With over 500 Magical Girl companies now in operation, you're sure to find a position and uniform that fits. Start your career as a Magical Girl today. Kana Sakuragi is an excellent candidate for the job, any job. She's motivated and organized, and has a fantastic memory. So why has she interviewed at over 15 companies without a single offer? She's trying to keep a positive attitude, but it seems like her bad luck is only getting worse when a monster crashes her latest interview. As havoc ensues, she finds herself helping the magical girl who comes to their rescue and ends up with more than just her life in return. Meet the new newest magical girl at Magi Lumiere Magical Girls, Inc. That's a long description, but if you're still unsure about this quirky, awesome premise, I got two solutions for you. One of them, you can actually read this series for free, legally, at the Manga Plus website. This is not an ad, I just like using the website and I want you to use it as well. So you can read most of the chapters there for free and get a good feel for the series if it's something you want to own physically. And if you're still not sure, you got a second option. This is getting an anime adaptation for the spring season 2024, so it's right around the corner, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna stream it at one of the popular streaming sites. So there are multiple solutions for your magical girl dilemma if this is up your wheelhouse. I'm gonna check it out, the anime, and I'm going to pick up this volume eventually, so count me in for Magi Lumiere. From Yen Press, we have I Want a Gal Gamer to Praise Me, Volume 1. This is an ongoing series with story and art by Geshumaru. When a high school shut-in, Raito Sasaki hires a pro gamer coach to help hone his FPS skills, he never expected that the one knocking on his door would be Rion Suzuki, a cute and fashionable beauty the same age as him. With such a charming and supportive gamer gal cheering him on, can Raito take his game to the next level, or will the pressure of being up close and personal with a bombshell like Rion lead him to throw 
throw. First of all, I like that there's no weird, creepy age gap and they're all in the same age group. That's awesome. Also, I am an old school retro gamer and I've never needed a coach to help hone my skills. But then again, I don't play FPSs and I'm not in the competitive scene. So what the heck do I know? I'd rather play arcade games and uh, platformers. That's just me. But still, I like that it's a Gyaro from the looks of it and the mashup should be hilarious. So if you're interested, go pick up I Want a Gal Gamer Volume 1. Is it Deja Vu? No, it's Initial D, the first Omnibus edition. This is one of the most anticipated releases for the whole freaking year, and it's finally here. Kodansha is putting out the Omnibus edition, volume one, collecting volumes one and two in a large sized two in one edition with a refreshed translation featuring story and art by the legendary Shuichi Shigeno. This seinen classic series is finally being collected after being out of print for so long at Tokyo Pop, and we're getting the whole shebang. That is awesome. All 724 chapters, which was 48 volumes, so now it'll be 24 volumes total to collect this series. So if you're a fan of Initial D, make some room on your shelf. If you don't know about Initial D, this tells the story of Takumi Fujiwara, who spends a lot of time behind the wheel. His his tofu delivery job sends him racing down the treacherous roads of Mount Akina, and without even realizing it, Takumi has mastered racing techniques that most drivers take a lifetime to learn. Of course, none of his friends realize this. They're all too busy watching the local street racing team. When the legendary Red Suns show up to challenge the Speed Stars, the rival team obsesses over a phantom car. The Trueno 86 seen racing through the mountain roads. Who is the driver? and will they take on the dangerous challenge? Also, I do want to point out that since this is such a hyped special release, there are multiple variants for this release. You got the standard cover, and depending on where you shop, you can get a DM, direct market cover, on places like the Crunchyroll store, in stock trades, etc., etc. Or if you go to Kinokuniya, you can also find a special manga cover as well. I am so happy that this is out, reprinted, with a better translation, count me in. Even though I'm not into racing, I still love Initial D and I can't wait to have this on my collection. From Kodansha, we have a pretty wild release. This is, I got reincarnated in a BL world of big man boobs, volume one. This is written and drawn by Tsukiji Nao, a shonen BL series. I gotta read the full description because it's hilarious. The first line in my script here says, I just wanted to touch boobies. If you're not intrigued by this already, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> Nagare Otokawa was an otaku loser obsessed with breasts. He tragically died never knowing the feel of the sweet, sweet bosoms he craved all his life. Little does he know, his wish is about to be granted in a way he never would have expected. Nagare gets reincarnated as a handsome guy and quickly realizes that he's living in a world, or I should say a BL world, full of sexy male beauties. Even so, he sets out to find and squeeze the bust of his dreams. He does in fact end up with his face planted deeply in some luscious cleavage, but to his dismay, it's the magnificent pecs of the super muscular class delinquent Ryuji Onizuka. Now not Nagare must try to dodge his way past the barrage of BL scenarios that hurtle into his path. Will he persevere and get the busty girlfriend of his dreams, or will he end up falling for the all-man yet temptingly bodacious Ryuji? I swear to you, I did not make that up. That is the official description, and it sounds amazingly ridiculous, and I want to check this out. So if you're excited for the world of big man boobs, leave a comment down below. Leave, I don't know, balloon emojis if you got it to this part. Pretty excited to uh, check that out if you're in the comment section. 
We got another release from Titan Manga. This is Grace Rosa Volume 1. Now there's something interesting here because to my understanding, and somebody can correct me in the comment section, this seinen series written and drawn by Himuro got discontinued or canceled back in 2020. It only ran for six chapters and only one volume was released. So I don't know what the plan here is. I don't know if the plan on splitting things up three and three or if this is a typo and it's meant to be a one and done volume as it should, but it is officially labeled as Grace Rosa Volume 1. Grace Rosa is an assassin driven by a single thing, discovering the secret of her adoptive father's disappearance. He trained her to become a lethal killing machine, able to wield any weapon she can get her hands on, before inducting her into the ranks of the shadowy organization known as Alterna. But could the very people she serves as a hired gun have something to do with him vanishing? And to what length will she go to enact her vengeance on the people who have wronged her. From the descriptions that I've read, this is great if you're a fan of the John Wick series, you will be right at home with this type of storytelling. The art looks extremely brutal. I had to look through other official previews to post here because yeah, some people were blown off and blood and guts and brains all over the place. So not the kind of thing I want to highlight on this video, but if you're interested interested in that level of assassin gunplay violence, then you'll be right at home with Grace Rosa. Finally, we close out this wild and wacky anticipated releases video with a Yen Press book. The Alchemist Who Survived Now Dreams of a Quiet City Life, Volume 1, Cycle of the Elixir. This is written by Aya Obata and art by Usata Nonohara with Ox. This is a manga adaptation of a light novel of the same name. However, this happens to be a reboot of the manga. The first one came out back in 2019 and it was canceled with two volumes out and they're still available. You can purchase them online. Do not get confused. Follow this guideline here with the cover that I'm showing. This is a new reboot ongoing as of 2020 and it tells the story of Mariela who performs incredible feats of magic. So when a stampeding horde of monsters threatens to devour the kingdom of Andalsia, she decides to put herself in a brief state of suspended animation to survive. Luckily, she awakens safe and sound 200 years in the future. Now, all Mariela wants is a quiet, laid-back life in this land she barely recognizes. It's too bad potions have become a luxury good, and she's the only girl in town with the skills to make them. I love this premise, and I can already tell that I'm going to be frustrated with Mariela because she wants peace and quiet, but she's got the skills to make the potion, so it's not going to be peaceful nor quiet. It's going to be hectic and chaotic as people will try and get her to make these potions, but thankfully she has a way to earn some money, so that's good. So there it is, folks. We have arrived to the end of this video. 20 anticipated manga releases. I hope you're excited for these. And if you're not, and you're excited for something else, well, leave a comment down below. I'm interested in finding out what all of you are getting in the month of March. Thank you all so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being part of Manga Geekdom. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's gonna be it for now. God bless, stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.